this new era, probably next couple of months, we're going to see a surge in interest in smart contract platform, which we have been developing this steam in Cardano, Ethereum 2.0, all that kind of thing. But now all those players are ready to launch. And that is super exciting. And an incredible amount of projects are being built on those platform, right? And as those new platform and dApps come into life, it's going to be an interesting market. What are you trying to achieve in your life? Who is the Yusuke in two, five, 10 years from now? Obviously now you're a big YouTuber, you're a, you're a great personality. What, what is the future for you? I try to just focus on maximizing my happiness at any given time. So whatever I do, I just try to make sure my self is happy and my family is happy, my friends are happy. And if I focus on too much on like crypto, if I to focus too much on money, then people can sacrifice happiness over short-term gains or like numbers in the bank account. But at the end of the day, people want to make money because they want to have freedom to do whatever they want, to be happy. And I think if I do that, if I just cherish my life and my friends this every second of time, I think it's going to lead to something bigger than what I can imagine. Welcome back to season five of Kryptonites, special edition London and Canary Wharf. We have some of the original gangsters of the crypto space and on top of that, a new format where you can earn crypto in every single show, plus earn swag and more. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and let's have some fun. <laughs> some of the biggest banks are money laundering for the Sinaloa cartel. And so much of what we're doing is trying to provide more transparency to the financial world. We're going to see a surge in interest in smart contract platforms. It's going to be an interesting market. NFT is coming from everyone. Everyone's dropping NFT. So anyone now today is still not sure about Bitcoin? You're fucking mad. <laughs>In a fast-moving and confusing crypto asset market, get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced, in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto asset and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member, helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments, all of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the CryptoSlate community. Subscribe now at CryptoSlate.com forward slash edge. What's up, crypto fam? Our next guest is Yusuke from Coin Club, one of the fastest growing crypto YouTube channels in Japan. He's bilingual, which is very rare, tons of knowledge, great guy. So you're in for a treat to understanding the Japanese investor mindset and many other things with a very secluded country. But before we kick off, don't forget to download the SwissBorg Wealth apps. So you get access to best execution through multiple exchanges, plus an automated farming product so you can earn yield on your crypto. Have a blast, guys, and catch you later. So Yusuke, you know, one thing that really makes me connect with you is I fell in love with Japan when moving to Japan, but you fell in love with living overseas as well, right? So it's exactly. almost like we have this cool mix and vibrations together. But um, i love to kick off with Japan, if that's okay with you. Sure. You know, I've learned so many amazing life lessons in Japan because the culture is so drastically different from the US in mm. so many ways. But one of the coolest things was that Japanese people are very economical. They're good at saving money, thinking long term. But I came across one crazy thing, What's which that? was <laughs> pachinkos. Oh, yeah. Pachinko. What an interesting phenomenon. But recently, it was in 2019, on, I believe it was Statista saying that pachinkos gathered more money than all casinos, Las Vegas, Macau, all that combined in one small country. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> can you tell us a little more? For, uh, first of all, if you could start off with what is a pachinko and maybe why Japanese people or businessmen, salaryman, use, use uh, pachinkos. Sure. <laughs> so pachinko is a slot machine, basically. That's what, what, it, what it is, basically. You put money and then you basically, you know, play the game and then if you win and then you make more money. But most people lose it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what it is. So that is very popular 
Um, and for many reasons, because I mean, there's some people who make, make a living out of pachinko, right? But as far as, well, I can only speak from my experience based on what I see, what my friends do. Uh, I think a lot of people do pachinko because they are stressed. That's the best measure for them to really decompress yeah. their uh, stress from day-to-day -day life, yeah. you know, working crazy hours. If you're maybe not aware you know, how Japanese work culture is, people go to office really early morning and then they work until 10, 11, crazy, you know, man. PM easily. Crazy. My my father, he was typical salary man, like a Japanese company, you know, he was working for a company, but he left home at six. He started working at seven until midnight. He kept going for 40 years until he retired. So that, from that kind of environment, people are stressed, so they, are, they wanna decompress a little bit. So that's maybe one of the reasons. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And while I was there, Yusuke, like literally, in my company, I saw people with sleeping bags at times, right? They were so mm -hmm. busy. It wasn't even worth jumping on the Yamano Tisen and going back home, right? It's mm -hmm. just, so they're using this pachinko to decompress, release their stress. But also the crypto world, right? Like, and I remember in 2017, there was one part of the year where the Japanese yen was actually more than half of all the trading volume. Mm -hmm. So obviously Japanese people resonated with crypto. Yeah. Is it because there is a lack of casinos or games like this to bet or gamble? Or is it like the pachinko crowd that is crossing over and found something new? The FX crowd that want to try something new? What made such excitement about crypto with regards to Japanese culture? Sure, um, based on my observation, um, there's definitely those, those who really love gambling, you know, coming to DeFi or crypto in general. Um, but also, I think as a country as a whole, Japanese people have less and less faith in their future security. So this is an interesting phenomenon going on. So back then, like a the past couple of decades, there's an unspoken promise between employer and employee, which is lifetime employment. So employer yeah. basically said, hey, we're gonna hire you until you retire, you know, and we're gonna protect you, we're gonna provide you a security. Then that was an unspoken expectation, but that has changed. So for example, like past even five years or past decade, Japanese company have not been doing well compared to like maybe 70s or like even after uh, World, World, World War II. Yeah. We saw crazy economical growth, yeah. but we don't see that right now. There's a lot of competition across the globe. Japanese company have, well, they're losing a lot of compet competitiveness against Chinese company or even Korean company. So then even now, you know, major company CEO publicly said, hey, we cannot guarantee lifetime employment and we see bigger company going bankrupt. And then now even on top of that, Japanese government basically saying like, hey, we might be, we might not have enough national pension for all of you. So you need to be, be investing your own money for your financial security in the future. So that was the message that was, you know, that was delivered by Japanese government. So I think that triggers Japanese people to see like, okay, this, we need to actually input money in a meaningful way um, to actually increase our asset. And I think that was, so I guess crypto was a good, you know, opportunity for them. Um, to really make that, you know, make that happen, so. That makes a lot of sense, makes so much, but it's so cool that the government actually was open and shared that message on, you have to start managing your future wealth, right? Yeah, because it's really interesting that, I think a couple of years ago, government officially said, $200,000 worth of like a pension money won't be there for you. Oh. So you have to like make up of $200,000 so you need to start investing. So company or government started to provide this investment tax-free accounts for mass market and really encouraging people to do so. And that really triggers you know, young people, especially because how the pension system works is basically current working population support the elderly people. Right now, there's so many older people 
that is supported by a smaller number of population. But basically, they are said that you know, their pension won't be there. So there's a lot of like, you know, confusion, there's a lot of anger. So that really triggers, especially younger generations, uh, to be really financially independent. And then a lot of them actually chose the route of crypto, I think. Hey friends, prize question of the week. Tell us, what is your favorite NFT or collectibles for a chance to win? a Swiss board Genesis premium at a discounted rate. You know, one thing I want to ask you is a lot of people, when they think about Japan, they think about Bitcoin being a legal tender. You know, as you know, Big Camera and some of the electronic stores accept with a limitation to maybe 100,000 yen, 200,000 yen, so mini purchases. Is that whole idea of Bitcoin being usable in Japan a bit exaggerated relative to what the headline's saying? You know, it almost feels like you, you can use Bitcoin everywhere in Japan, but still quite limited, right? I think it is quite limited and I don't know if, I don't know how many people really think that way. I think maybe back then people thought Bitcoin as a legal tender or whatever, you know, maybe, or maybe similar way to that. But right now I think people just see Bitcoin as cryptocurrency and a store of wealth. Speaking of store of wealth, you know, the Japanese yen is quite stable, quite strong, just like the Swiss franc or the Singaporean dollar. But are Japanese people more interested in Bitcoin just like any other community? And other than Bitcoin, what are some projects that happen to be popular in Japan? Because Japan has its own behavior, right? That is mm -hmm. maybe quite independent and different from the rest of the world. Sure. I don't live in Japan, so I don't exactly know exact number. But when, when I, I hear a lot of people love Ripple, XRP. Ethereum, Ethereum, IOST, IOST, yeah, and awesome team, Cardano, Cardano, or like something like that. And interesting thing is that, like, so if you go to Binance.com, there's a uh, hundreds of coins available for you, but in Japan, yes. there's not many coins yes. on the exchange. Even if you go to big exchange such as CoinCheck. There's not many yeah. coins available and the number of coins hasn't been increased for a long time. So people have, Japanese people have limited access to those uh, very few coins. But I think Ripple, Ethereum, those two are very popular. And speaking of which, you know, the, the little access like you're mentioning, it's almost like, you know, you have the Coinbase pump, you know, whenever a token lists, then yeah. Phew, yeah. and you have the Binance pump sometimes as well. Uh, and recently we saw with Engine and a few of these coins and tokens that got whitelisted through the FSA in Japan also had a big surge in price. Do you, do you think that being approved in Japan and listing in the local markets helps coins and tokens to grow their, their market cap? And I believe so. I believe so. I mean, Japan still is a big country and there's a, a lot of people looking to invest in a new promising project. So, but Japanese people are very conservative, right? They don't want to do anything illegal. So in that sense, whenever they see the green light from the government, so they want to comfortably put in money. So as you know, Japanese, Japan, Japanese economy is still big and, and Japanese people have a lot of money to play with. So I think um, if Japanese community, you know, see those green light by the government and then just start moving the money, I am sure the, it has a huge impact on uh, market cap and the uh, future of the token. The token, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I'd love to ask you a very tricky question, Yusuke. Okay, I'm you nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> you lived in New York, you lived in Japan. If you had to take one investment tip from Japan to share with people in the US or just the West in general, or take one tip from the West and give it to Japan, what would they be if they were so? Uh, that's a tricky that's question. That's a tricky question. But I guess for from Japanese culture in general, Japanese people are just trying to be very clear on, or they, they try to be compliant. Compliant, yeah. Uh, and uh, they just try not to cross any gray zone, or like they just try to like assess their own risk. And uh, sometimes like here in a, you know, New York or like, you know, I, I have personal friend in New York who put entire portfolio and money yeah. in like a Dogecoin, for example. Yeah. And I know some people became very successful, but I know some people are, are miserable now. Yeah. And then I think those like a uh, meme culture, like properly assessed 
the associated risk. I think it's a really important thing, and I think that's something that Japanese culture really, you know, uh, brings to the West. But also, on the other hand, uh, in the Western countries, I guess people are more open to maybe put it in, put money in something that's risky, or maybe high risk, high return. And uh, I think that's that has to be also, you know, taken into this Japanese culture because it's so extreme. Yeah. And I think that um, we need to have a balance where we need to assess the proper risk, but also we have to l learn how to enjoy and partake on this opportunity to opportunity to really grow, to grow our asset. So we, we really need to like have a you know, good balance. Good I don't balance. know if this is. No, that is the perfect example. You know why? Because I remember in, in college, we had this cross-cultural study, you know, and it was showing Japan as mo the most risk averse and the oh. US is more risk taking, right? So oh. your example is exactly what I mm. heard through the classes in college. So yeah. that's a really good example and w different ways of seeing things, right? Almost completely yeah. different. I think it's, a, yeah, I think both sides is really important, but I think we need to have both in perspective. Perspectives, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yusuke Coin Club is one of the coolest YouTube channels. The growth you've gone through in the past three months is unfreaking believable, man. Thank I you. have to ask you, and super jealous and super happy for you at the same time, <laughs> how did you scale so quickly and, and what are some of the recipes of success? Why do you think Coin Club has suddenly been, you know, so recognized amongst the Japanese community? Oh, thanks so much. Uh, so, so Coin Club is a, for those of, for most of people who don't know Coin Club, uh, it's a Japanese crypto YouTube channel where I cover crypto news. And uh, I think one, to answer your question, one of the secret is that I try to be just differentiate from other YouTubers. Um, so if you look at the Japanese YouTuber, 90% of YouTubers are technical traders. So because, the reason why is that there's no many people who actually can read English or like being able to research cryptocurrency industry in English. Yeah. So a lot of YouTubers be, and choose, you know, like a technical, technical analysis route. So I saw this opportunity, but also I realized this is a big issue because in order, to, in order for investors to put money in crypto, we need to understand the environment, what's going on in the, in the world. And so that, that's what I try to bring. And I think I just don't have competition when I started at least. And uh, also when I started my channel three months ago, which was in the middle of bull market. So those two combined really bring to this level. And uh, so I'm very, really, really thankful for the, yeah, um, the growth and opportunity that bring, brought. And I think to. that is such a great point, Yusuke, because I remember reading a book. Have you read a book called Blue Ocean Strategy? Yes. That's a great book, right? Yeah. And finding your USPs, the unique selling point or right. differentiators. And I remember this quadrant saying, what are you going to add? So for example, your video quality is really nice in the beginning. So you've added video quality, you've added yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just showing a screen, people can relate to you. Then what do you add, but also what do you create? Mm. And then what do you reduce and what do you completely eliminate? Mm. And that quadrant, like finding USPs, as you said, is really cool. It, it's more than that, my friend. You've done an amazing job with Coin Club and, and so happy to have you here today. Thank you so much. Kyomo, arigatou gozaimasu. Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>